All right, so what is sensory transduction? This is when a external stimulus, so a sensory stimulus, what could this be? Touch, um, pressure, temperature, pain, visual stimuli, sound waves, or other internal signals. So blood, pH, um, where your body is in space, blood glucose, any of those stimuli um, need to be interpreted by your nervous system. For that to happen, the signal needs to be transduced, which means converted into um, a way that your body can understand it. So light is only sensed by our bodies because our neurons are able to convert light to a neural stimulus that eventually travels to our brain. So the process by which physical energy is converted into some sort of neural signal, that's sensory transduction. So the stimulus is going to result in first a change in membrane potential. Um, right, so similar to an EPSP or an IPSP, um, they're not called that necessarily, it's a receptor potential, um, but we need to have a change in membrane potential in order to have that stimulus be sensed in the first place. So we've got here our outside world and our inside world. And in the outside world, we're going to have some sort of stimulus. So this could be touch, light, sound, etc. This is going to be um, received by our bodies. So what's gonna be right here is going to be a receptor. It's going to convert this external signal into a internal signal that can be perceived by our bodies. One thing I wanna note is that not all stimulus are actually, stimuli are perceived. Um, you could have sensation without perception. So what that means is we've got this receptor here. Um, this is here, our raw data coming in. Information coming in from the outside world, right? That's what's coming in here. Information, that's raw data coming in. And the receptors could be located in the eyes, ears, skin, um, muscles, tendons, etc. cetera. Um, they're going to receive this and that's going to be our sensation. Now, this sometimes can lead to perception. Oftentimes, when we think of stimuli, we think of perceiving them. What that means is that we are aware of them. Um, this is happening in the brain. So this is gonna be when we get to the, a primary cortex, a primary cortical area. So primary somatosensory cortex, primary visual cortex. This is going to be a perceived sense. We have other senses where would those go maybe, cerebellum, um, where we are not conscious of those stimuli coming in. So you can have sensation occur without perception, um, theoretically. Well, not just theoretically, but it does happen. So let's talk about how this is gonna happen. Erase this here. There we go. So this is a sensory neuron obviously. Here is our uh, unipolar. We're going to see some sensory neurons that are bipolar. This one is unipolar. So we're going to have a stimuli come in from where? From out here somewhere. So here we're going to have a stimulus. Again, we'll see a few examples, um, but this could be a mechanical pressure change. Um, mechanoreceptors would detect that. It could be light. It, which are actually photons binding. 
light is not detected by a neuron like this, but the stimulus at this point um, is any external signal coming in. And that's going to be detected by receptors, special receptors. We'll talk about different types of these. For all sensation to occur, these receptors are going to result in, what do you think? A receptor potential, a change in membrane potential. How does this happen? Well, We've talked about two ways that receptors can change memory potentials. There's direct or indirect signaling. So this stimulus could bind to a receptor that is an ion channel, um, or it could bind to a receptor that's a G protein coupled receptor that opens up an ion channel indirectly. Either way, we're going to have ion channels open and that's going to change the membrane potential. Ultimately, we're gonna have an action potential that's going to allow <clears throat> this information to travel to the brain. So this is what's common with all sensory transduction. Um, we'll see variants and complexities, mostly with vision as our example of the of complexity. 